programmers! Today we're going to write a program in C to simulate Conway's game of life. It's not a traditional game with winners and losers and points. It is a cellular simulation that will automatically play once you give the initial configuration. It was developed by John Conway in 1970 and it's amazing how interesting it can be. You'll start with a grid where certain cells are marked as either alive or dead. So in this example, I've got a six by six grid and all the cells are marked as dead. There's nothing in them. I could change it to this grid over here on the right where I've got six cells marked as alive, the ones in blue. So you'll go through different days or different phases where the cells will mutate based on their condition. And the conditions are you could have underpopulation where any live cell that has fewer than two live neighbors will die. And a neighbor would be the cell above it, below it, to the right, to the left, diagonal to the right or left, upper and lower diagonals, eight different neighbors. So if I'm counting neighbors, this alive cell right here only has one alive neighbor, the one below it, and et cetera, et cetera. Cells will die in the next round. Stability would be any live cell with two or three neighbors will live on to the next round. So all of these blue cells have three neighbors that are alive, so they'll all live on to the next round and be in a stable position. Overcrowding is when any live cell with four or more neighbors um, is gonna die. There's, it's overcrowded. So if I were to look at this example, well, you can count in red, I marked how many live neighbors it has. So anything that has more than a four, so the, the one with five or eight, those cells are gonna die. And then some of these cells, there's another rule that is rule four that will make some of these cells on the outside come alive. But anything in the middle of that diamond of fives and eight, um, that's gonna end up dying in this next round. Our last round is reproduction. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes alive in the next round. So if I count the, the live cells neighbors, they've got one neighbor or two neighbors. And so we know that the ones that have one are gonna end up dying off. But if you count the neighbors of the dead cells, well, there are a few of these dead cells, two of them to be precise, that have exactly three live neighbors. So they're gonna become alive in the next round. All right, I do eventually want a bigger grid, like 25 by 25, but I'm gonna start debugging with just a smaller grid of a five by five. And I want an enumeration list to keep track of dead and alive and as a default the dead's going to be zero and alive's going to be one i could just create an array at this point that i want enumeration status to be the data type and i'm going to have a grid let me spell grid correctly with a maximum number of rows and a maximum number of columns but i'm going to clean this up a little bit by using typedef and saying, I want an alias, a shorter way to talk about enumeration status, and I'll make it capital status. So now we can do something like this, and we can even make this shorter. Um, so instead of having to always say, I've got an array here, I'm gonna make a typedef for this array of statuses that I'm keeping track of. So we are gonna typedef, and I'm gonna call it capital grid, so this is no longer a variable name, this is now part of an alias, and now if I want something of that data type, I can just say capital grid, and that's a, uh, a two-dimensional array of statuses. So I'll probably make a grid, and then I'll print the grid. I'll have to make a function to do that. and we're gonna go through and print every cell in this 2D array. 
I didn't want you to have to watch me type all this, but we're gonna have two integers to help us loop through the rows and the columns. And if it's in a live cell, I'll just print a star, otherwise a space, and I'll go to a new line character after each row. So this will print the grid. Let's put some values in our grid to see if it worked or not. I'm gonna mark three of my cells alive, and I go ahead and run it, and we do see we've got those three all in a line. Another function we're going to need is a copy grid function. So we're going to take a snapshot of what the grid looks like on one day, and then we'll need to start filling out the grid for the next day. And it is useful to be able to clone a grid and save a copy of it. So we'll just go through all the rows and all the columns and, and fill in the clone values. Something I missed earlier is we really need to initialize our grid before we start printing values. So I made an init grid function that goes through and marks everything as dead. So in the beginning, in main, I'm going to go ahead and call init before I fill in my test values. Then we can go ahead and calculate what the grid will look like on the next day. So to do that, I'm going to go through a loop, all the rows and all the columns, and calculate the neighbors for every single cell, whether it's alive or dead. And we learn that if there is zero or one neighbors, we've got an underpopulation problem, and that cell will become dead the next day. If it has two neighbors, then if it's alive, it stays alive. If it dead, it's dead, it stays dead. So the next day grid spot will look the same as the current day's grid spot. If we've got three neighbors, whether we're alive or dead, then the next day we're going to be alive. And then if you've got four or more neighbors, then that cell's going to die of overcrowding. So to start out with, I am going to just loop through and ask the user to press one to continue. And then we can keep looking at every day of the grid. So once I'm done calculating what the next day is going to look like, I'm going to clone that and put it into grid as well so that I can always just call print grid and then go through the loop again. So I've got a while loop while the user is still typing in one. So let's see how this appears when I've got this first row here marked with three um, stars. Um, as I go through to the next day, then it is correct that I am going to lose some values, but I'll also have two live values if I press one and everything should die off. And at the point where there's nothing left to display, I think we should end the program instead of having an infinite loop. So my new function, someone alive, will take the whole grid, go through every row, every column, and look at the cell and say, if we're looking at that cell and we see at least one cell that's alive, then it's worth printing out the map. So if it's alive, we'll go ahead and um, just return one. One means that there's something alive. Otherwise, if there's nothing alive, then we're going to return a zero or I put it in a variable called answer. Instead of while next, we can say either while next or while someone is still alive out of this grid. And I'm gonna, once I'm done debugging these kind of situations right here, I can go ahead and just randomly generate the contents of the grid instead of, instead of letting the user decide whether or not they wanna see the next day. Oh, let's see what's going wrong here. Oh, someone alive needs to return an integer. Let's try again. Okay, so we've got our first two days there. Uh, I'm gonna press one to continue. Things should be dying off and we exit that loop. Let's also, in our print grid, print some status of how many cells are still alive and which day it is that we're on. I'm gonna make a static variable that will keep track of what day we're on. We'll start at day zero, and then every time we call the function, we're gonna add one. And then at the very bottom of printing out that whole grid, we can go ahead and print, I'll say, um, day, and then print out whatever that static variable is. I'd also like to see how many cells are alive. I think that would be useful to see. And we'll have to make a variable to count that as well. 
just a normal int. And then every time we see one that's alive, we can increment that counter. Okay, so we start out day one, we've got three cells that are alive. Day two, it's down to two cells that are alive. And day three, zero cells are alive. And then we're going to exit. I could clean that up a little bit. I feel like there's too many new line characters. Um, let's yeah, we don't need quite that many new line characters. The part where I'm by hand putting in the cells that are alive and I'm going to change my initialize function to randomly assign either alive or dead cells. We can go ahead and do that now. So instead of just always saying it's dead, I'm going to call a random number. Let me stop running the random number generating function. So if rand modulus 2 gives me a zero, we've got a 50% chance of either being dead or alive. And what else can we do? We can, so now we don't have to hard code all these values right here. We'll randomly see, okay, we're getting a lot more variety here. Day one, day two. I also, what's gonna really add some pizzazz to this is if I have a clear screen function. Clear screen, and this is how you do it on Linux or Unix. All right, so this weird character combination on a Linux or Unix will make it look like you're clearing the screen. Really, it's putting uh, a bunch of blank lines in and we'll be able to scroll up and see the different days. So we will be calling clear screen every time we go through. So we clear screen, we print the map, go through. We're gonna copy our map. I'm going to sleep for a second, otherwise it's going to go by so quickly we won't see what's going on, and then clear the screen before we go through again. All right, by using sleep and the rand function, that made me need a few more headers. So let's include standard lib.h for the rand, and we also should see the random number generator, and then time.h will see the random number generator with that. I also included the sleep function, so I'll need to include unistd.h. Okay, I'm gonna call srand and then see what we've got. All right, day one, day two. I don't really need that press one to continue. Day three, although for debugging, it actually is useful to be able to analyze day by day. It's looking really good. Um, let me make the grid a bit bigger. So maybe a 15 by 15. And then I'm gonna get rid of the asking the user if they wanna see the next day. Oh, I love it. It's looking great. And we can see all the cool patterns. So I hope you enjoyed this Conway's Game of Life. I will post a link to um, this program in case you made a typo and you're having trouble figuring out how to fix it. Happy programming.